Good afternoon, everyone. I'd just like you to keep your seats for uh, just a, a brief moment. I'd like to welcome you to St. Luke's Episcopal Church. And um, uh, by the looks of the congregation, this will probably be the first time that I meet a lot of you. My name's Nick Ferris, and I'm the new rector here at St. Luke's. Um, I hope that as everybody walked in, they were able to, to grab a bulletin. Um, and I just wanted to, to come up front and not only introduce myself and welcome you, but to just like prepare you uh, for the burial office uh, that we're, we're about to enter into. It's, it's an arrestingly short service, especially if you're from a different denomination where their funerals may be quite a bit longer. Um, in the Episcopal Church, we have a lot of, you know, all of our prayers are written down, so to speak. And so we move through those prayers deliberately and with great intention. The prayers that we say together uh, today are some of the most ancient prayers in the Christian tradition, and they're the most hallowed. And so I'm so happy that you all have gathered together today to give life, uh, to give witness to the life of Jamie Sue Clapper and to be here to support her family. the congregation please stand. Okay. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and no one becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Jamie. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered, But ask the animals, and they will teach you. The birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. Does not the ear test words as the palate tastes food? Is wisdom with the aged and understanding in length of days? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's read together Psalm 36 as printed in your bulletin. Your, your love, love, O Lord, Lord teaches, teaches to the, the heavens, heavens and, and your, your faithfulness, faithfulness to, to the, the clouds. clouds. 
Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. A reading from the first letter of John. John writes, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. My friends, uh, now we'll sing our, our one and only hymn today. It's the King of Love My Shepherd Is. No funeral, I think, would be complete without us reciting the 23rd Psalm. And this, this, uh, this music, this hymn, is the 23rd Psalm uh, uh, set to Isaac Watts' uh, poetic rendition. So if you would please rise. And the blue book is the hymnal. And so if you could stand and turn to hymn number 379, we'll sing, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. 645. Clearly all the bulletins weren't right.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, my friends. So the great evangelist Billy Graham once wrote, God will prepare everything for our perfect happiness in heaven. And if it takes our dogs being there, I believe that they will be. I can only imagine Jamie's smile as her eyes beheld what we all know only in part. And if I know anything about her, which I must confess to you, is it much? This I know to be true, that after learning of her death last Thursday, I began trying to collect as much information as I could about her life and passions, and three things became clear to me. She loved her family. She loved animals. And she was kind. Most folks around here that I spoke to remembered Tony's whirlwind trip to the Mayo Clinic. In fact, some here were in the nave that day when the Holy Spirit rushed through this place like the wind, and off you went. And then something happened that took you all away from us. That was long before me, and yet here we are in a place both familiar and strange. And just as I met with you all for the first time last week, you have known Luke's place, it seems, your whole lives. Tony, I hope that being here as you cross this threshold and for you two men, um, as you do one of the two most hardest things that you have to do in your life, I hope that this day is full of peace and the peace that passes all understanding. I confess to you all that when I selected the text for today's service, I couldn't remember a time when any of these lessons have been read in conjunction with someone's celebration of life. But how wonderful and poignant they are as one of Jamie's passions was in the art of caring for beings that needed care the most and couldn't ask for it. That should tell you quite a bit about her. One of the greatest revelations of God's creation is indeed God's delight in his creatures. Among these are animals who touch the most intimate parts of our hearts, our need to nurture and protect, our need for companionship and love. These needs exist within us no matter what, but it seems that animals have a unique ability to bring them out in us. Dogs, cats, lions, and monkeys, though I imagine Jamie didn't encounter any of those, <laughs> inspire us to reveal these deep human needs. 
which we might otherwise keep hidden. And that is a truth that Jamie knew well. And her life's work was to draw that love out of everyone she met by her example. What results from such a caring disposition is a highly developed sense of empathy. Empathy, as we know, is a complex emotion for us humans. In many ways, it seems to be disappearing from our society. Because of the constant media barrage of violence, death, and despair, we are becoming increasingly desensitized to the suffering of all God's creatures. But not Jamie. In fact, memory is of her serving not just animals, but our children here in this place are a testament to the great well of unconditional love that she possessed deep within her soul, despite the ways of the world. And that is because I believe she knew instinctively that children and animals both demonstrate an innocence that all of us feel compelled to protect. So that, in fact, an increased empathy for not just dogs and cats has nothing to do with the preference for a certain species, but everything to do with our innate human desire to protect and nurture those who are innocent and helpless. And folks who make that their life's work are some of the most grace-filled human beings that we know. Someone who loves us for who we are, who has zero expectations, who is always happy to see us no matter how grumpy we may be. Isn't that what we all want? We crave unconditional love, even if we don't say so. In human relationships, this precious commodity is almost impossible to find, but not for you all. She was your daughter. She was your wife. She was your mother. And she was your friend. I grieve with you as all of us bear witness to her life. The truth that I hold on to in moments like this is the fact that for Jamie, her life has changed, not ended. And we can trust in that. Of all people, Christians should know that we live out of a faith that does not rest on a system of merit or worth but on the confidence that God continues to love us with an unearned love, both now and forevermore. The challenge for us now is to leave this place knowing that we are empowered to reciprocate Jamie's care through just deeds in this bristly, tormented world. No one knew better what this world needs than Jamie, and that is the legacy that she leaves us and the charge that we are to carry forward. And so, my friends, I ask that you hear the words of Jesus again as you begin that work, as you honor Jamie, and as you honor your Father in heaven. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Your Father knows that you need these things. Instead, strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be given to you. My friends, please stand as you are able.
in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism. Let us now proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our sister Jamie, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection, and I am life. Lord, you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Jamie and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear, Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. Jamie was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Jamie. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Hear us, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Jamie who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Jamie, 
Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. My friends, we believe that the liturgy of the dead is an Easter liturgy, and thus we give the Easter blessing. The God of peace who brought again our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, from the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will and work in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the presence of Christ.